Hey what's up and how's it going? My name is Toby and in today's video we are going to be taking a closer look at the gameboard navigation system within the Lightship ARDK3 and the Unity engine. So we're going to build a little project where you can just tap on your screen and your character will move within your augmented reality application to a certain position, which is an amazing feature. Alright, so I've got a pretty much new Unity project here. The only thing I did is I pre-installed the Lightship ARDK3. If you want to know how to do that, there's a full tutorial in the description. And I've also gone ahead and I've deleted the main camera and created an AR session XR origin by right-clicking and going under XR. Okay, so to get started, of course, we need to begin by activating 3D meshing. For that, we're going to create a new empty object, call it meshing. Then let's drag this under the XR origin and add the AR mesh manager component as well as the Lightship meshing extension. So for the mesh prefab, I already provided something in the video description. You can just drag it in. So the only thing that we are going to add to this prefab is an invisible material. So let's quickly search for that. It is in the ARDK samples that uh, we've also installed. Um, with the ARDK3. It is called Invisible Mesh with Shadows Material. Let's quickly drag that into, oops, into the um, mesh renderer. And so what, it's, what this is going to do, it's uh, pretty much going to just cast the shadows of the objects but not show itself. So then let's quickly drag in uh, the prefab into our uh, AR mesh manager, then adjust some settings. So for example, the concurrent queue size, I'm gonna take it to 50, frame rate maybe 15. Then the integration distance, reduce that to four since we're indoors for this. Voxel size, we can increase a little bit to get nicer performance, right? Okay, so this is the meshing. And now if we have set up in our Lightship settings, our playback, uh, so there are some data, sample data sets uh, basically for playback in the video description also to download and playback basically means that there will be a video played within the uh, editor and so we can test out our AR app without actually building this to our phones. So we can quickly check to loop this infinitely and I chose see the desk horizontal example from the samples that are also in the video description. So if we hit play now, let's take a look if this is working. And of course, since it's invisible, we're not going to see the mesh. But what we can do is just select trackables. And now we can see, oh yeah, there's something happening. This seems to be the table. And if we click here in the scene, we can see some single mesh components over here. So yep, seems to be working. And next up, let's talk about the navigation system. So let's first of all create a empty object and call this game board navigation. So then let's add a few components. Let's enter game board and then we have the game board manager and the game board renderer, which we are going to be using. So then let's drag in the main camera here. And also uh, let's quickly drag in the whole object into our renderer, which we can use for debugging. And as a material, we could just enter something like blue, and this is opaque blue from the ARDK samples package that we installed. And so now if we, I don't know what these arrows mean, let's clear them. Now if we play, we should see, well, we don't see anything. Why is that? Well, this is because we forgot to do something. We need to reset our transform because actually the game board uh, navigation object is very sensitive on where it's actually positioned. With some other objects, it's not like that. But if this is not on our 0, 0, 0 position, we will not see anything. So after resetting it, we will see, oh yeah, there's actually something happened. A game board is being calculated. And now we can see, well, maybe the tile size is a bit too big, right? Because the desk is 
a bit on is a bit of a smaller object and we want to have more detailed paths here so let's click uh, quickly pause this one and reduce the tile size to 0.075 and then maybe increase the flat floor tolerance so if even if the mesh is not so even we're go still going to have a flat floor and the scan range we can increase increase to two um, which is probably meters I guess so let's play and we can already see if we disable the gizmos here that yeah this looks pretty nice so it's a pretty good looking game board which we could probably now place our character on so in order to do that we're going to create a new empty object and call this character um, maybe game board character and we are going to use a few scripts that will be in the video description so three scripts in total the first one we are going to use is the placement on mesh character as well as the click to move so let's quickly uh, add, attach those both components to our game object and then let's just quickly select the camera here like this and what these scripts are going to do if we quickly open them up in our IDE so the placement on mesh character script is pretty much just checking first of all if we're in the editor if we are on iOS and then it's doing a raycast and if the character has not been placed yet it will simply instantiate it on our uh, 3d mesh that we generate so that's pretty much all while the click to move script is going to create a list pretty much it's, it's basically the same script so we are clicking we are sending out a laser beam array cast onto our generated mesh and depending on well depending on where the ray cast hit it will create a new waypoint for our uh, character for our agent which is then going to be added to our waypoints so then the character can move along to those points so next up we will need a agent so for that we could potentially just very easily create a new cube for example a new cube ob object and um, maybe reduce the size to 0.1 like this then recenter the position like that and add a component which is going to be the game board agent all right so this one is pretty much controlling the character while these two are going to first of all create the game board and then render it so we can debug it this one is of course optional so we first of all need to prefab the cube as our character then we can go back and drag it in as our placement object and if we now delete it and go back to our game scene click play and then we're gonna click somewhere oh we can see something is not happening and this is because we forgot to add an event system so let's quickly do that and add the default input module and replace it with the UI input module so now if we're gonna hit play and now we click somewhere oh we can see the cube it's still too big though let's just scale this down to 0.1 for example gonna hit play click and now we have a cube here and if we click somewhere the cube is going to move like a little agent so that's pretty nice and well this is kind of to get the game board agent system working so in order to understand the game board navigation system a little bit better let's take a look at the click to move script which is going to call the move along waypoints method and so we've already seen what kind of objects we need to include in our scene but now we're going to take a little look on how to actually move the game board agent in order to for example walk to a specific waypoint and for that we have 
on the top here, we have a reference to our GameBot agent and we are going to find our agent once the script is being started, which is going to happen after we placed our agent by just clicking on uh, the mesh. And so then, well, what it's going to do is it's going to ask for the path status of the agent. So if we take a look at actually what's possible here, so if we enter agent dot, oops, agent dot path dot path status, we have complete invalid or partial, which, which would mean that has our agent completed its current path? So is it finished? Is it invalid? So for example, is it not possible to go to the, uh, to follow along the path anymore? Or has it partially completed? So is it currently on its way to a certain position? So if we take a look at the script here, well, we first of all wanna know, of course, if we have any waypoints. So if we click anywhere and if, the status is completed and we still have waypoints to go so we still clicked somewhere then we can have uh, we can call this method agent.set destination so again if we go to our agent we have pretty much the path the state and the destination so these are the main methods that we use and set destination will pretty much do what it says so it will tell the agent to go to a specific position. While the path and the state can retrieve certain information about whether this path has already been reached or for example, if, um, if we take a look at the state, if uh, the agent is idle or has for example paused. So this is just a pretty simple overview. So in the case of this script, for example, we will ask whether the status uh, of the path or the agent state is either complete or idle and then we're gonna get to the next position so for example if we would have only checked for the path complete then it wouldn't even start walking around because there has no path been assigned yet so that's why we can check for both of these um, states and path status all right, so this is just a little introduction. And if we wanna go further, I created this different project here, which actually has a full character attached to it. So if we click play here, we can see that we can place a character and make it move around and it will actually play a walk animation, right? So it will just move around these um, waste spots that I set here and it will have this run animation. I put the link to this asset in the video description, but basically what I've done is exactly the same thing, but I've added another script to my character here. So it's called uh, gun character animation controller. So all the script will do basically is it will check the speed of the character and if it's beyond a certain threshold it will just change the animation state in the animator and we can now change the animation state based on whether our agent is walking to a certain position or not. So the agent system has many advantages above the normal navigation system within Unity and if we have a live mesh that is just recalculating all the time and our playground is changing at runtime. So then the agent system by the Lightship ARDK is just more flexible and less prone to errors and problems. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.